Hi there, my name's Eric. I'm going to walk you through some of the advanced features of the Nikon D300, some of my uh, preferences for how I have the camera settings. We're going to start in the playback menu. This is the menu that controls aspects of the camera for playback of the images that you've already taken. Let's see, some of the things that I like to change are uh, the display mode right here. This controls what kind of things you can see about the pictures that you've taken. Uh, I like to turn everything on by default. Most of these are unchecked. Highlights will show you the blown out parts of the picture. will be flashing black and white. Focus point shows you in a little red box what part of the picture was focused on. RGB histogram gives you a red, green, blue histogram, of course. And data gives you a um, bunch of shooting data. Uh, any one of these menu items that has the question mark in the lower left available you can hit the question mark button on the camera and see some pretty detailed information about what it is in case you forget. Let's see, hit the right arrow to choose it, the left arrow to go back. Let's see, uh, the next thing, review, image review. This is uh, so that you can see the picture immediately after you take it. You don't have to hit the play button. Default is off. I like to turn that on. Rotate tall. This will, uh, for any images that uh, detected the camera was being held sideways, it'll rotate them when you play them back. Of course, uh, that means you'll have the black bars on either side until you zoom in, but I prefer that than flipping the camera over. Uh, slideshow, that's pretty self-evident. So that takes care of the playback menu. Let's go to the shooting menu. This controls the setting for um, how the data is saved and things like that. Uh, picture control, shooting menu bank, shooting menu bank is a bunch of saved settings for the items that are in the shooting menu itself. So all of the items that are in here, you can change them however you want, and then if you want to save that as a like a profile, you can save it in here, and then uh, whatever you save in here is only for the shooting menu. It won't affect the other menus. Um, active folder, file naming, image quality, image size, JPEG compression, raw. I'll go in there. You can see that you can pick which kind of raw you want, 12-bit or 14-bit. Uh, you can have it um, compressed or lossless compression or uncompressed. I leave it default. White balance. Set picture control. This lets you choose whether you want standard, neutral, vivid, monochrome, and then if you go to the right arrow, you can actually adjust each individual item to be more customized. Anytime you go into a menu that left arrow doesn't do what you want, you can't get back with the left arrow, you just hit menu to go back. Um, so that's picture control, manage picture control. You can save them to the flash card, color space. You know what that is, active DE lighting. This will shorten the exposure of picture graphs to try, or pictures, to try and save the um, highlights from blowing out. And then it will artificially bring up the shadows in RAW before it's saved as a JPEG. It's a little better than the um, post processing de lighting because it uses the RAW imagery. Long exposure noise reduction. Uh, Anytime the sensor is exposed to light for a long time, hot pixels will show up, and this will neutralize them. It'll take another shot. That So like if you have a 10 second shot, this will take another 10 second shot with a black foreground, and then all the hot pixels it will subtract from the first shot. So pictures take twice as long to uh, save using that, but you won't have any hot pixels. High ISO noise, re high ISO noise reduction. Uh, every time you turn up the sensitivity of the sensor, you're going to introduce uh, more noise to the sensor, and that will attempt to get rid of it. It does a pretty good job. I leave it default, normal. ISO sensitivity settings. This lets you tell the camera that you don't want to shoot anything less than 1 30th of a second, or whatever. Uh, say that your tolerance is 1 30th of a second. That's what it's defaulting to right now. Any picture that doesn't have enough light, it will automatically increase the ISO until it gets to your desired shutter speed. You can set the desired shutter speed and you can shut you can set 
the maximum ISO that it will go up to to try and get that shutter speed. I leave it off. Uh, live review. This lets you choose whether you're going to use handheld mode or tripod mode. And then when you do take a picture, it lets you choose whether you're going to take a single frame, low speed, or high speed continuous. I leave it default. Multiple exposure and interval time shooting isn't available because I have the camera set to continuous shooting. Because I have the camera set to live view, actually. Okay. Multiple exposure. I don't know why you'd use this, but it lets you take uh, pictures of two things and it blends them automatically. You could do it in Photoshop, probably better. It lets you choose a number of shots and the gain. Uh, interval timing, this is for doing time lapse photography. Just as a heads up, this shutter has a life of about 150,000 shutter releases. Uh, if you are making a film at 30 frames per second, that means you have an hour and a half of shutter life before you need service. So a lot of movies will add up and take their toll on this camera. Movies being time release. Or, uh, let's see. Shooting menu. Okay, we went back to the top. Now we go down to custom settings menu. Custom settings also has its own settings bank, which means you can change all the stuff you want in these menus here and then save them as a profile. And you've got uh, four profiles to pick from. And when you save something, it only affects settings that are under the custom settings menu folder. It won't affect the shooting menu or the setup menu or any other menu. Uh, some of the things I like to change on this under autofocus, this is a sub-menu of the settings menu. Uh, we have AFC priority selection. Comes default set to release, which means when you have continuous foking, focusing, the shutter will fire as soon as you hit the release button, no matter whether or not it's in focus. I prefer to use release in focus, which means it'll try and focus it before it fires, even for continuous shooting. And focus means it will only fire if it's in focus and confirmed. AFS priority selection. This is kind of the same thing, but for single shooting mode, uh, it defaults to focus, which means it has to be in focus for the shutter to fire, and that's how I leave it. Dynamic area, auto focus. This affects pretty much the only change this will affect is when uh, you have continuous focus enabled, um, and the focus sensor is in the middle position, or the focus switch, which is in the back of the camera. Um, there's like a 51 point autofocus, a single point autofocus, and then a dynamic autofocus, which is in the middle. And when that is set, and you have continuous focusing on, um, this will automatically pick your target. If it's a person, it'll typically identify the person and put them in focus. 3D tracking means when you when you focus on an object, and then move the camera off center, or uh, just point the camera in any other direction, it will keep track of that object that you focused on and keep the focus brackets as close to that object as it can automatically. It's pretty cool. Uh, so I have it set for 3D tracking. That way I can compose my picture and then recompose the camera for a different angle without having to move the little focus bracket left and right and up and down to try and stay where I want it. Focus tracking with lock on. This means if an object walks or like if something comes between you and your subject momentarily, it will ignore it for a short while and it lets you set how long that time is for it to ignore an object that's at a much different focus range. Uh, 